excuse me. I didn't see you walk in. Let me put this down. Oh, it's you. I remember you coming in a couple of months ago. Yes, of course I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a great conversation with you about some gentlemen's hats. Yes, yes. What can I help you with today? Oh, you're back. You're back to see more? Well, that's wonderful. Because let me tell you, we just got in a new shipment. And before, we were kind of getting into some of the more formal attire where now we are full-blown into any hat and any occasion you could possibly want. Yeah. Yeah, it's fantastic. Well, how about we do what we did last time? I can show you a couple hats. You can tell me what you think. Yeah. Awesome. Well, let's start with the one I was just cleaning, huh? This is a a top hat, of course. Wool all throughout. Structured. Pretty firm. And this top hat is, of course, something that you would wear to a formal event. Put it on your head as such. <laughs> I know it, um, it looks a little strange by modern standards, but a timeless classic, I will say. Still very relevant for galas, white and maybe black tie events. And this particular top hat is actually referred to as a sort of ferryman's hat and or a coachman's hat and a regular top hat can be much larger. Um, you've seen Abraham Lincoln with his stove stovepipe hat, which is you know maybe even higher but this is a coachman's hat which was worn predominantly by individuals who were driving a stagecoach in england in the united states they moved over to bowlers and, and different kind of hats but in the late 1800 as well as um the i guess all the way up to the late 1800s there were stagecoaches, and the person, people, multiple, would wear these coachman's hats. They are shortened versions of a top hat. Timeless classic, and if you wear this, you will 100% get compliments or your money back. So, with that being said, I've already mentioned it. that a duke or a prince, I don't remember which, wanted a hatter to design something for him to wear that would not be obtrusive, would not stick up from his head uh, to get knocked off by tree branches. He wanted something that was smaller, efficient, and able to withstand a thud if need be and the hatter came back 
with a bowler. While they say bowler, um, bowler was the name of the individual uh, who made that, not bowling as in strike, spare. This is a timeless, timeless piece that is still used in South and Central America by women. Women use this. A lot of hats were predominantly worn by women and then went up to be worn by men. This one was a hat that was made to be worn by men and is now predominantly worn by women. A bowler is predominantly worn by men. Venezuelan women, Southern and Central American cultures. It was also the hat of choice for the military as well as police forces. It is still used in equestrian sports as well. A very stiff, very structured hat. Still a timeless classic. Also used by comedians as well in the early 1900s. Absolutely relevant today. And of course, talked about this briefly when you were here last time, our array of fedoras. This is a beautiful Italian made fedora. in navy blue with a beautiful stripe. Last time you were here, I showed you the Hamburg hats, which were predominantly worn in the early 1900s. And as soon as the fedora came out, they were quickly replaced. One of the main reasons is because of this. Totally crushable construction makes it easy for you to travel with it. It makes it easy to wear it comfortable, water repellent, and just a phenomenal hat. As you can see here, this one is light felt, 100% wool, never loses its shape, and water repellent. And of course, all of our hats come with these little strips that you can put on the inside of your hat in order to make the hat fit better. The fedora is a timeless, classic piece that will never go out of style. And you know what? While we're here, why don't we just, you know, talk about a couple of other variations of the door. This right here. This is called an Outback Fedora. An Outback Fedora has larger brim in the front and a larger brim in the back to make more of a cowboy shape while everyone's favorite hero Indiana Jones wore a traditional fedora his front and the back of his hat were a little bit longer so makes people say that he was actually wearing a outback fedora now outback fedoras find a lot of use in uh, gauchos ranchers um, cowboy hats, as well as um, down in Australia and places with <laughs> no ozone layer that require a lot of protection on the head. 
as you can see. Definitely a much larger hat, much larger brim. And that may be appealing for some. Might not be. It's up to you and what you're trying to do. Fedora, as a whole, is a very elegant hat. Now, back then it was casual hat, but now people see the fedora as being quite an elegant type of hat. And the Outback fedora kind of is not that. It's much more casual. So some people would be attracted to that. Other people, not so much. Okay. Let's talk about our last fedora-based, fedora-based hat. You have this right here. I, I told you about this last time, but I didn't have any to show you. This. This is a trilby. People call these fedoras. These are not fedoras. They look like fedoras, but they're very different. They have a similar structure as a fedora, but they're also very different in the fact that they have an upturned brim. And even if the brim was not upturned, it's much smaller than your traditional fedora. This particular one is made by Kungle and is our most popular model. A fedora look alike. Now, individuals, I dare say, who state that they're wearing fedoras are most likely wearing a trilby, not a fedora. A trilby used to be known as the rich man's hat. It was something that typically was reserved for the wealthy when common folk started wearing fedoras. Very pretentious start. But a lot of trilbies are worn with the front facing down and the brim up in the back. But if you ever see somebody wearing a trilby and they say they're wearing a fedora, call them out on it. <laughs> Don't let them get away with it. Those are our fedora hats. All of them are wonderful. All of them great products and wonderful hats. Let's move on. This next one is by far one of the strangest hats that I've ever seen. This is a pork pie hat. <laughs> yes, you heard that right. A pork pie hat. A pork pie hat has a seated crown for the contours of the head, like a fedora. But unlike a fedora, it is very cylindrical. It's crushable, just like a fedora. You can totally crush it, which makes it very easy to travel. Um, water repellent, wool. It has a, a beautiful, beautiful band that goes around, just like a fedora. But it's not. This is not a fedora. What separates it? Its shape. It's flat top. The fact that it has this upturned inch and a half, inch to inch and a half brim that goes all the way around it. Individuals who wear pork pie hats have tended to be individuals who wear these hats casually. These hats are very, very difficult to make look while wearing a suit. They're very difficult. Um, worn by jazz 
musicians, a lot of jazz musicians. If you remember um, Jack Frost, the old Christmas movie with, uh, was it Michael Keaton, was it? Uh, he wore one of these. Um, if you remember um, Breaking Bad, Walter White, he wore a pork pie hat. Pork pie hats typically have their, they have their fame. Typically, it is a casual-ish hat that could be worn both, but has been worn almost exclusively as a casual hat. That it would be difficult, be difficult to sell with a suit. Um, certainly never at a black tie event or a tuxedo. However, they're very comfortable. This particular one. Michael Keaton and Buster Keaton. I want to say Buster Keaton. Wasn't he the actor in the 20s? I think he wore one too. Don't quote me on that. This particular one is made by Robert Graham. Very ritzy in his own right. Maker and design. Call it a pork pie hat because it resembles the dish pork pie. <laughs> Can't make it up, even if I wanted to do. Well, we only have one more hat that I have that you didn't get to see last time you were here. And it's probably one of my cooler ones. Let me show you. This right here is a boater hat. If you look at this and you say, that looks like the hat that the gondoliers use. The ones that row the boats in Italy, you'd be right. This boater hat comes from that. It is made from straw like a Panama hat, but instead of a Panama hat resembling a fedora, the boater hat is very flat. Very rigid, as you can see. Has these big looping construction. As you can imagine, these types of hats are worn by sailors, people out there boating almost exclusively and in the summertime. So if you see somebody in modern day wearing a boater hat, this is for maybe matching it with a seersucker suit or navy or basically summer ensembles, spring ensembles. It is unlined, however, despite it being unlined, and despite, in theory, having the ability to have air get in here, it is still a very warm hat. <laughs> You're still having straw. This is the boater hat. Well, there you have it. We went all the way from super formal with the top hat down to the bowler to our fedoras 
and then to super, super casual with the boater hat and the pork pie. As you can see, the shop carries everything that you can need from black tie events, tuxedos, all the way to casual, hanging out, jeans, wearing jeans, uh, kind of ensemble. You have any question? Yes, I, I do have a, a tendency to favor the fedora. The fedora, in my opinion, is just the king of hats. Phenomenal hats. Well, it's been a pleasure having you back. A wonderful, wonderful pleasure and a great, great conversation as well. Let me tell you, you are welcome back anytime. Come back, maybe in a couple months, and I might have even more to show you. And of course, if you want anything, just let me know. I'll talk to you soon. You're welcome. Bye-bye.